So good morning, everyone. Uh, sorry for keeping you waiting. Um, let's see. I don't think that we should wait any longer. Actually, I think we should get this up and running. Um, so first of all, I want to welcome, welcome you to this uh, webinar together with a lot of professionals uh, in the building. Um, and I mean, this is about how could you utilize HubSpot from a SaaS or from a, a, like a B2C perspective and how can you use HubSpot as a, as a triggering engine uh, in regards to, to marketing, et cetera. Um, so, I mean, uh, let me just quickly share my screen and let's get this ball rolling. So this is the agenda for today. Uh, first, a quick introduction to all the people joining in from all, all of the corners of the world. Uh, I'm going to talk briefly about Invice. Uh, Steve Vaughn, who's also here, is going to talk about HubSpot and the ecosystem of HubSpot. Uh, we're going to have these different topics. We're going to talk to uh, Ed from Better Collective, who's going to make a really good presentation of himself. And we're also going to walk through a customer case together with Better Collective. Uh, Hannah from Winning Temp is also going to have a really splendid uh, <laughs> presentation in regards to herself and how they've been uh, using HubSpot for their journey so far. Um, we're also going to end this with a discussion. And after that, you're all free to go. Um, and just for your information, this uh, webinar is being recorded. So uh, no reason to be uh, panicking and taking screenshots because you will have everything after this uh, meeting. So let's do this. Quick introduction to the panelists. I'm Frederick. I work as a CTO for Invice. Um, so my responsibility is kind of similar to <laughs> Sid, who we see here, and more of a solutions architect. How can we use the actual platform, both in regards to looking inside the UI, but also how to uh, connect the API to, to other parts of your tech stack. So I'm super happy to be here, uh, and I would like to uh, present Hannah. Thank you so much. I'm Hanna Vigren. Vigren. It's very hard to pronounce in English. Uh, I work as uh, head of growth marketing at Winning Temp. So I look after all our regional markets. Um, I have been working in B2B sales marketing for the last eight uh, years. Uh, and in the majority of that time has been at startups with early stage growth. Thank you. Sid, go ahead. Great. So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Siddharth. Uh, people call me Sid, and I'm pretty OK with that as well. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm Sid. I'm a solutions architect here at Hotspot. Um, what that means is I get to work with the, the different sales teams and partners like Invoice for um, like prospects or customers who would like to evaluate Hotspot in, in any capacity, uh, some of our most strategic and complex um, you know, customers today. Um, we are all very excited to show you a, a story of uh, how like Better Collective adopted Hotspot. Uh, it's it's a it's a journey that uh, you know you'll see in a, in, a, in some time. So with that, uh, I'm going to pass it to uh, Steve from Hotspot as well. Good morning, everyone. Nice to be with you from sunny Dublin. Here, my name is Steve. I've been working at Hotspot for nearly nine years, uh, helping particularly grow uh, our top Hotspot partners. So I've been along the journey of seeing HubSpot's growth uh, and now helping many partners grow too. So I've been working with Invice for many years and delighted to be here. Perfect. Ed, tell me more about yourself. Good morning. Yes, so uh, I'm Ed. Uh, I'm the head of marketing technology and e-commerce uh, at Best Collective, where I've been for just under five years. I've been working in marketing for probably close to 15 years, covering very broad range of disciplines across digital, very interested in tech, keeping up to date on basically how tech can improve day-to-day -day processes and businesses, and as well as marketing automation, where I've been very focused from time day-to-day. -day. I oversee an ad operations team and a marketing operations team, but the stuff that I really like getting my hands dirty with is focusing on demand gen and customer retention. Good stuff. Thank you so much. And we're going to hear more of all these uh, people later on uh, in this webinar. So let's move ahead to uh, just quickly talk about Invice, just, uh, because I probably invited you to this. So I should be <laughs> I should tell you who we are. Uh, so Invice, we started 
Uh, I think it's like 12 years ago, started actually with when uh, websites weren't responsive at all. You built custom-made mobile websites, so it was a, the dark ages, it wasn't super good. Uh, but at that time, that made sense. So after a while, uh, we started implementing HubSpot uh, ourselves, and that was a long time ago when we figured out, well, this is a really good solution. Uh, why don't we start working with that and you know sell that as a service? So that's how it uh, actually everything started. Uh, so from a Swedish perspective, I think that we're one of the, the pioneers here in, in that market, which is super nice. Uh, I mean, our goal is to be straightforward, uh, dedicated and revenue focused because we use HubSpot as a tool to actually know what our, we and our clients do in that actually provides uh, revenue and, and generates effect. So uh, we're pretty interested in analytics and actually how it can uh, make your company grow, not only in regards to clicks and uh, expressions on, on, on Google Ads. So uh, the whole journey, actually. Uh, what we're looking at today is that, of course, we think that the marketing and sales, that has been a discussion for many years, how to align those two. I would say that is something uh, that happens all the time and it still makes sense. But what I can see is that tech is getting much more involved in this because you have such a sophisticated system like HubSpot to connect all the dots. So if you were to ask me what is happening with invites in the next two years, well, I think that we're probably gonna be 50% tech people, actually. We are still gonna keep on working with the CRM and the marketing parts and also the service parts. But I would say like technology, uh, is the way forward because we need to connect it to your uh, other parts of a tech stack. Uh, and of course, we're a HubSpot elite partner, uh, which means that we are top tier. We uh, have a good relationship together with, with Sid and Steve and the rest of the team. Uh, and I would like that to go outside uh, the Nordic market. So hopefully we can you know, go more global uh, in the end, but we want to do it good. So let's start small and grow. Um, yeah, and absolutely. Oh, sorry. Uh, just looking into uh, what makes us special. I don't know if that makes us special at all. Uh, but I would say like our energy is something that we uh, really thrive on. Uh, we feel that we don't want to be uh, a suit or, um, you know, suit and tie company. We just want to have fun. We want to have really smart people here. And that's what we're working for. So, yeah. Um, and just some sort of wall of brag. Uh, if you're from Sweden, you understand that this is a, some sort of seal of approval that we've done something right, uh, both from a uh, from a professional uh, perspective and how we work with uh, with our customers, but also as a business, uh, we have a really good organic growth, uh, and we have a good. Uh, CEO, who is actually right now meeting with Jeff Bezos, if that makes sense. But I, I, I'm super impressed by her, uh, and she's just uh, flying around the, <laughs> the world just to meet uh, influent, uh, um, what do you call it, like inspirational people. So super happy about that. Um, I would say that looking into industries, we're kind of open to everything because Sweden or the Nordics are, you know, we don't have that many super good HubSpot partners, which means that we, we don't specialize in one industry in particular. Uh, but what I can see is that we're moving more to an, uh, to an enterprise or SaaS related uh, companies. And this is just uh, some reference cases that we are using uh, or working with today. Good stuff. Steve, do you want to talk about HubSpot for a short while before we start digging into the details? Great. Uh, thanks, Frederick. Great to hear about Invise. Let me share. Uh, this is HubSpot. And to talk about HubSpot, I want to talk about the difference between being crafted versus cobbled. Um, if you want to understand what HubSpot is and what we do and how we operate, we need to understand this story of crafted versus cobbled. So let me explain a bit. Today's most uh, disruptive companies are winning on customer experience. Invisor are a great example of this. They have great customer experience. When it comes to customer experience, we kind of know this, I'm sure. Uh, you've got to think through the whole journey from marketing to sales to service. When someone doesn't know about your brand at all, then they find out about your brand and are a prospect. They move to becoming a customer. And then what we really, really want is then to be a promoter. And it's a nice, simple customer journey, isn't it? I'm sure those of you that have joined this call or watching it back, yeah, that's the journey, marketing through to sales, through to service, nice and easy, straightforward customer journey. But in reality, 
what it looks like at the bottom of the screen is what a customer journey is. Uh, there's so many touch points. People go backwards and forwards and sides to sides. They might start with your website and then move to your sales team and then it's not the right time and then they move somewhere else. And uh, the whole thing is very complex and far from that nice linear process I just told you about when you start anonymous and become a promoter. Um, so HubSpot's trying to help companies ensure they have the best customer experience but we recognize this is typically the kind of customer journey that any particular customer goes down lots of different touch points at lots of different stages so when you break it down into the various components of what happens uh, along that customer journey through marketing to sales to service um, hubspot has discovered there's five main elements that uh, need to be considered, or there's five core elements that that, are, that help run the whole engine uh, underneath it. Uh, a bit like uh, air and water to survive. So uh, companies need these five things to survive if they're to, to ensure good customer experience. First of all, you have content to reach people who are unaware uh, that you exist. Uh, that's the first place, the, the fir first block. Then you have the messaging. Messaging is helps. Uh, start that conversation now people are aware and we need to start that conversation with them and then we have automation to streamline the whole process um, then we have reports and insights to understand what's working and what's not and then of course we have an underlying uh, layer of data to capture all of this and to able to optimize accordingly so they're the five core elements underneath any customer journey now there's tons and tons and hundreds and hundreds of, cust uh, of companies doing all kinds of bits of that journey from the content to the messaging, automation, reporting and data. And maybe you use some or you know some. And there's some great tools out there uh, that definitely help you with parts of that customer journey. One option you can do, therefore, is you can build it by yourself. You can say, listen, we're going to organize the customer journey. We're going to buy lots of different pieces of software and do a bit of this. We're going to build a bit in-house. We're going to have a bit here for marketing, for sales. And you organize it internally how you want. And a bit of marketing influences that, a bit of sales influences that, a bit of uh, the services influences that, a bit of IT influences that. And the whole thing gets put together and you build it yourself. And you can do a pretty good job, particularly when you're smaller or you're or, or you're early on in, 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 in company growth. Another option is you can find someone that has, um, I, I guess, acquired all the various aspects, all the different tools in the market. And there's a number uh, of different vendors out there that will do that. And they will put it all together and, and give you that sense of, of, uh, of being able to handle all parts of the journey. What we discover, whether you build it by yourself, or whether you build it by acquisition, by going to a, to a company that's acquired, you end up with what's called cobble tax. There is an expense, there is a cost to this. Uh, the first one is the silo tools, which makes it really hard to align. So your data processes and teams aren't aligned, so your buyer experience will suffer. Um, you have a clunky UX. Uh, because you're working across multiple systems, it's different. You know, your login is different. What you're playing with every day is different. You've got different teams using different things. It's going to be hard for adoption. It's going to create huge inefficiencies. And then you have an inflexible stack. So if you need to make a quick change as a company, if you need to pivot, if something happens in the market, uh, if you've got all these things organized together, then you're sort of locked in in a kind of very, uh, well, we can't do this because it affects this and it affects that. And it's spent a lot of time getting it organized. So that's the cobble tax. HubSpot is built differently. And what is HubSpot? Well, this is a sort of HubSpot story. HubSpot is built differently. We want to help you on that customer journey, realizing that it's complex. We want to make sure that you are doing the best you can and giving your customers a great experience uh, so that you succeed, uh, moving them from anonymous to promoter. We want to help you with the four, uh, the five, excuse me, uh, main blocks there, content, messaging, automation, reporting and data uh, and we want to do that all in one um one one platform with one underlying code base and uh not, not acquired just built together crafted uh, uh from the start rather than cobbled together uh, and we talk about a flywheel uh where you want to get the flywheel spinning so as you get customers coming in then they then they, as they become promoters they drive your next um you're, 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 they drive awareness in the market and drive new business for you. 
When you have a crafted approach to technology rather than a cobbled approach, it helps with growth because you get a single source of truth uh, which makes it much easier to align because there is that underlying code base and everything has been built from the ground up. You have one intuitive UX because it doesn't matter what part you're working with, a marketing or sales or service, it's all the same. It all looks and feels the same. It's one lots of training. It's one logging. Uh, it's, it improves uh, the adoption. It improves team efficiencies. Um, and then you have a unified code base underneath, which makes it easy to adapt. So if you ever need to pivot or move as a business, uh, you're not sort of in a complicated setup. And the reduce is the total cost of ownership um, because you take a strategic approach to consolidation of your customer tech. So that, in a nutshell, is what HubSpot is all about, being a crafted, complete CRM platform rather than a cobbled CRM platform. I've been using HubSpot now for uh, over eight years. I've used m most of the other famous CRMs historically. It is the easiest to use and yet just as powerful and uh, uh, people want to use it because it helps them. Uh, now, isn't a CRM just a sales tool, Steve? Do you not work in the commercial side of the HubSpot business? What is a CRM platform? Isn't it just for the sales team? Well, a CRM platform promises a single source of truth that empowers your front office teams to deepen their relationships with customers and provide a best in class experience. So in other words, it's not just for sales, it's for the whole customer experience. And that is what HubSpot is, that CRM platform, a united platform to help you grow and gain access across every part that you might need, unifying your marketing, sales and services databases, sharing context of what's going on with your customers and prospects between the different teams and organizing and tracking customer communications. So I hope that's helpful, just to give you a bit of an insight into that idea of crafted and not cobbled and uh, how HubSpot is that integrated and unified CRM platform. Over to you, Frederick. Thank you so much. And I think that you can stop share because I want to see Edward's pretty face uh, on here because I want an introduction from you and you know, just to get a better understanding what is better collective, how, why did you choose to go with HubSpot? Why Invice uh, also? So please go ahead, Ed. Okay, so Best Collective, we're a uh, sports media group. Um, how do we put that simply? We have a network of different websites and apps which have over hundred million monthly users. And what we, what we do is we build products and platforms or acquire products and platforms um, to enhance sports betting. And that's anything from the insights and tools to help people bet, the betting tips, educational content, uh, like general sports media covering all sports and events across the globe. And in our products, we aim to make betting uh, entertaining, more engaging for users while maintaining that transparency and fairness for the end users to be better betters. Um, that's in a nutshell. That is quite a complex when you actually put that across all of our different products and websites uh, and apps. We have quite a complex uh, architecture and we've acquired many companies. So when it comes to BC and choosing HubSpot, we've just grown, we've grown significantly, both organically and via acquisitions over the past few years. And along the way, uh, we inherited many other platforms for auto, for marketing automation or CRM. And we kind of got to a stage we felt a little bit limited with our, you know, with existing solutions um, when it comes to being able to quickly plug in new businesses into our existing infrastructure. And I mean, uh, we really just wanted to simplify things with one platform that could handle all of the channels, centralize the first part data, handle the life cycle management all the way through to revenue. Um, and we've been doing a lot of work with Oracle, with Eloqua, which is a fantastic solution, but the simple things often became quite time consuming and difficult. Um, so along the way with these <laughs> different uh, M&As, it became, it became much clearer to me that we needed easier integrations. We needed kind of low code or low tech requirements so that the end users um, had an easier time. And in my role running you know, a marketing ops team. Essentially, I want marketers to be able to focus on marketing uh, as the business becomes more complex. And I mean, HubSpot as a platform, the ecosystem, you know, the, the UX was a good fit for how we want to work as an operations team. 
Um, and actually touching on uh, what Steve was saying, the HubSpot with the kind of build versus buy approach, I've always found quite attractive. And that unified code base, it means a lot of the previous challenges we've had. I didn't have to worry as much about developers needing to le learn lots of different APIs or ways that system works. You know, you had the confidence that it had been built in a way where our developers could get quite comfortable with that and learn one way of working and hopefully simplify things for them. And then invice, let's talk about you. <laughs> um, I mean, most simply uh, from my side and from the business side, anything we do, if we're gonna work with a partner, we, we need to see ROI as quickly as possible. I know we have certain strengths in the business, but I'm also willing to admit we don't have expertise in a brand new platform. Um, we don't have expertise in HubSpot. We may be great at all these other things, but that time to value is, is critical. And if you don't crack it in a fast paced business, if you don't crack it straight away, it's gonna be difficult to keep getting the buy-in and getting people on board with it in a complex business. So where Invice kind of fits in there is, I wanted to work with a partner that could help on borders, build the right foundations um, so that we've got this success in the long term, right? But also from the start, um, we trusted the people we worked with. At the time of looking, uh, at the time of when initially me, me and you, Frederick, were having conversations, there were other solutions on the table, there were other partners on the table, um, which I think gives credit to Invice um, because uh, Invice actually grasped very quickly what we had in mind. And better still, actually provided a solution um actually demoing for one of the brands how we'd be able to do these real-time personalized campaigns and use all this first party data that we've been wanting to build um and that immediately just gave me confidence not just in invice but actually helped sway me more so towards hubspot being the solution um and that the campaigns and things we had not just that they're possible but they could be built and scaled without too much pain uh, which is always nice. And without me having to go to our development team uh, and, uh, and scare them off with super complex requirements and things that, you know, things could be built quite easily. Um, again, with Invice, I think, you know, we could focus on, we know our own tech, but Invice is always going to ensure that outside of our own tech stack, they can teach us HubSpot, HubSpot's uh, tech stack and how to use that in the best way. Um, and I mean, generally it was from, in such a short period of time from those discussions, what was shown um, of what could be done, I completely bought into. And that's opened up tons more ideas and helped educate me uh, on how we can better use HubSpot and kind of bring that into the middle of all of our marketing. Um, and I'd say last but not least on the invite side is <laughs> asked the why we initially chose them, but actually look now and we're a few months into the project, you've also been quite agile and flexible when it comes to our own timelines and our own, the products we're working on, the integrations we want to focus on, um, as, you know, internally priorities do change, timelines do change, and uh, and you guys will be great at kind of adapting to that and working and suiting our work style, um, which is which is always quite nice. Yeah, thank you so much for the kind words, Edward, and super interesting to follow your company as well, as I know that it's so, so big, so complex, but at the same time, you know, we want to keep it simple. So that's why I'm going to leave it to, to Sid to have a, a, a quick uh, overview of the actual product, uh, just to get it more into detail. So Sid, welcome to the team, and please describe uh, what you're about to tell us. Absolutely. And I guess uh, speaking of timelines, we'll probably have to rewind uh, back to 2021 uh, sometime in September or August, uh, where like Ed and his team, you know, um, it was great that Ed and his, and his team understood the value of what Hotspot brings, like how it could make them, you know, be more agile, you know, from a marketing point of view and uh, reduce the dependency on, you know, a lot of development effort to roll out campaigns. Uh, but the challenge was uh, right in front when it came to the scalability of the platform. Um, like, can Hotspot handle like you know some of their most complex use cases? And you know, as Ed mentioned, um, you know his business involves uh, like multiple different brands, and each brand has its own complexities in terms of the data involved, in terms of uh, the the requirements in in general. So uh, with that, what it, what it led to us was uh, saying, hey, let's take probably the most complex requirements that you have. And let's probably try build out a proof of concept with that. 
and um and and for that we had to understand like the top three use cases which they would love to see as a proof of concept um this was you know the the, the challenge that we had at that spot you know at, at hand and invoice was the perfect partner for us uh, to combine together and present this as a proof of concept so um when we look at the top three requirements um within uh, for better collectors, one of their most uh, you know challenging or complex uh, brands. Um, one of them was to trigger um, in-app or browser notifications or emails based on changes that happen in their uh, external or or their um, data warehouse or internal database. Um, and the second one would be how could they easily manage recurring or daily email sendouts based on uh, betting picks or uh, lists information that exists in, in let's say, uh, their uh, content management system or in their internal database. And uh, finally, the third one was uh, how would they analyze performance of, of these web notifications being sent out real time? And uh, how could we uh, you know, better <clears throat> uh, like improve the efficiency of these notifications? So we sort of broadly classified the proof of concept goals into three parts. And that we kept that on one side. The second side is trying to understand what are the tools that Hotspot could really offer to you know support that. And we realized that uh, Hotspot, along with the marketing hub enterprise, um, combined with the um, hub DB uh, functionality, which is Hotspot's own relational database. For those who don't know, you know what hub DB actually is. Um, the second piece that we thought would be crucial for this uh, would be Hotspot's programmable emails. Um, again, programmable emails are emails that provide the maximum level of personalization in terms of fetching data from like uh, external databases, using them as personalization tokens so that the emails that your end users receive have by far the most personalized information based on the data that you've collected on the marketing front about your customers. And the third important piece was also about the scheduled workflows. So. It's great that we send emails, but could we send these emails every single morning, every single day with the most relevant data uh, was the other you know, uh, missing piece of the puzzle. And uh, finally, you know, the other pieces for analytics would be uh, the behavioral events, which helps you to uh, gather like information about uh, what their customers do on their website, like what URLs they visit, the, the buttons they click and, and everything else. So, we, we understood the goals that uh, that needs to be achieved. We also understood the tools that uh, are required to achieve these goals. Uh, we also understood the different external systems that they use, which is uh, you know one signal for uh, web or push notifications, um, CMS platform through October, uh, like Salesforce as a CRM, uh, Better Collectives. One of the brands also sells like a lot of subscriptions through their e-commerce platform uh, with WooCommerce. So um, keeping all of that in mind, uh, like the goal was to bring these together. And this is where um, both Hotspot's platform and invoices capabilities came into the front there. So um, overall, on a nutshell, as you can see here, Hotspot looks um, like in, in the middle where like you understand where like data from the social media websites or webs, all of them get aggregated in Hotspot, which collects a lot of user data. Um, user data also gets collected from the CMS platform, from the e-commerce uh, system. Now, how do we harness this personalized data that we've captured and how would we like uh, trigger daily email send outs or web notifications? And that's typically done um, through OneSignal or Hotspot's own email platform uh, as well. So um, with that, I'll pass it on to Frederick who will probably go into the details of how exactly that the solution came about. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sid, for uh, describing that. I mean, this can get so technical if we wanted to, uh, but let's keep that. I mean, let, let's book a demo uh, on the uh, outside this webinar for, for that purpose. Uh, I would say that uh, we had two you know, main things because Ed and his team, from a marketing perspective, wanted the HubSpot UI to feel really simple. But there's a you know a difference to saying like okay from a usage uh, daily work perspective to keep it simple in order to do that we need to make some really complex stuff uh, on the outside so uh, what we looked at is two different solutions for for uh, for this specific scenario 
So what we know so far is that we have this uh, recurring kind of send outs when it's daily picks, whatever. So we want to send them like once a day or whatever uh, at, at some sort of recurring uh, cadency. Uh, on the other end, we want to provide real time information uh, because when it comes to uh, to to bets, etc., or odds, whatever, uh, they change, you know, all the time, which means that we are talking about millions of API calls, millions of, of small like pushes from that. So we're trying to investigate what would be the best solution here. How can we use HubSpot in the best possible way without you know taxing too much on the APIs uh, to make people have server errors or to have delays on these real-time notifications? So we came up with two different solutions. One would be the medium into, uh, level of integration, which means that from the daily uh, daily send outs inside HubSpot that is being recurring, or if it's ad hoc, you want to send like, okay, everybody who likes Philadelphia Flyers in NHL, I want to send them a specific uh, specific send out with, you know, the, today's picks, whatever. Uh, that all can be managed from HubSpot based on that we have that information in the HubDB that Sid just talked about. Um, so this means that we can still use HubSpot as the tool. We don't need to rely on developers to, to, to uh, create or use cool templates, whatever, and to fetch that information. We can just do it on an everyday basis. So I feel like that is, uh, that's a good thing. Uh, when it comes to bad stuff here is that the real-time data when it comes to picks is not being handled directly in, inside HubSpot. And that has a reason. I'm going to tell you why later on. Um, the other one was to say like, okay, let's do this. Let's go crazy. Let's use HubSpot for every purpose there is in the world. And let's just use all the data inside there. Uh, we tried looking at, into the different kind of um, different parts of HubSpot. And as we see, the pros are actually, you can manage everything inside HubSpot. But the problem is that, I mean, Better Collective is a big company and they are growing, which means that this is not the final <laughs> The final setup of HubSpot it will keep on growing, which means that the millions of API calls, etc., will be tens of millions in the future. Um, and we will also, you know, from a data perspective, let's say that you have all the bets in one database and you have HubSpot over here to get it over to HubSpot and then HubSpot to send it out as a notification. That might be a few seconds, which means that is it real time? Well, maybe not. So, um, I mean, we just figured out that this is not a good idea because this doesn't make sense. We, this doesn't help us too much uh, because we can still achieve the same thing with the medium level of integration. Because the only thing that we would lose with this medium level of integration, which means that we will have the, the real-time data outside HubSpot, was that we were concerned, are we losing the tracking? Because we want to say, let's say that you send an, a browser notification that says, oh, you got, for example, you get 50% off if you click on this button. Well, then we want to know, okay, we sent this to a, a thousand people. How many of them did actually click on this notification? And how many actually purchased something after? Because if we don't have that, we cannot calculate uh, the ROI. We cannot calculate how that specific campaign actually ended up. But we managed to find a way to do that because of the custom behavioral events, as Sid also mentioned, which means that Everything is going to be powered from the outside when it comes to real-time notification. But when you click that little button in your browser, we will have a little query string, or not a little query string, we will have a long query string that says, okay, interpret this. It comes from this campaign. It was this notification. This is how you can track it. So in the end, we will still get the analytics uh, inside here. So that was you know, our recommendation. Um, so... As we as we talked about, one signal is it's good for you to know as well. I mean, one signal is a really good tool to connect into uh, into HubSpot, and I also know that the HubSpot product team are working, you know, are actually building this integration. So it is a really good integration, uh, and that will help us. I mean, if we in general use HubSpot for email sendouts, we use it as a CRM. It's a really good tool. It has a lot of functionality. When it comes to these kind of uh, text messages or in-app notification, even if you're working in SaaS, you know, from a customer success perspective, I often get a question, okay, let's say that they're starting using our software. Can we use HubSpot to trigger, you know, onboarding notifications? Can we use that to create in-app messages in, in, based on their behavior? Yes, we can by using a third party like OneSignal. Uh, so that is also the reason why we connected that for, for those kind of notifications. Of course, you can home build a notification, but 
kind of doesn't make sense as one signal is so uh, very well integrated. Um, so yeah, that is you know the, the main the main thing here. So daily sendouts will be done through programmable emails, HubDB, the sync from October, uh, and we can use that by uh, having these kind of uh, recurring workflows. Uh, easily adjusted, Ed can just go in and say, I want to send this message. I want to import this data uh, from the database. Let's just send it to Frederick because Frederick is so interested in Schlefto Aiko, which doesn't make sense if you're not from Sweden. But if you're a hockey fan in Sweden, you know what I'm talking about. And I can get a personalized message based on that. When it comes to real time notifications, we will send it directly through one signal, but interpret the actual uh, analytics and usage of that uh, notification. Good stuff. And I know that there are so much to walk through here and we have all those crazy uh, architecture design and how we set up the database. So I would just say, if you're interested in actually seeing, okay, how does this work from the code to the actual notification? How does the journey you know, stick together and how can we analyze it? I'm happy to show that to you. So just reach out to me on, on my email or you know, uh, on LinkedIn, whatever. I'm happy to share it with you. Good stuff. Uh, Hannah, it's time for you to shine. So uh, just, I'm just gonna stop the sharing here. Thank you so much, Frederick. Uh, yeah, now it's time for me to talk a little. Uh, I will not talk about any complex solution, but more about the business and rather marketing perspective uh, of HubSpot. Um, during the last uh, three years, uh, I have been working at the HR tech company uh, called Winning Temp. And uh, Winning Temp is an employee engagement platform uh, for visualizing the status of employee well being across the workplace. And uh, I actually joined as the first person in the marketing team. And since then, we have grown quite a bit. We're now 12 uh, members in the marketing team. And during the time we have grown, um, uh, we have experienced a revenue growth of around 300%. Um, so going back to uh, 2019, when I started at Winning Temp, uh, I got the fantastic opportunity to build the marketing organization and foundation from a clean slate, uh, which was very, very exciting. And one of the first thing I knew was that I wanted to implement HubSpot uh, because I have worked uh, with the tool since 2015 and I know its capabilities and its value. Um, and for me, actually, it was not only about investing in a tool, but rather in like the inbound sales and marketing flywheel or methodology or whatever you call it. Uh, because at the same time, um, I did a lot of other activities such as building the brand, uh, brand platform, graphic identity, uh, creating the website. And all of that was created with uh, the flywheel um, um, in the background in my head. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and uh, we implemented HubSpot uh, Marketing Hub first, uh, which I was responsible for. And then we also implemented the Sales Hub and the CRM. Um, and when implementing uh, the Sales uh, or the Marketing Hub, as I said, we worked with a lot of associated projects in parallel. For example, we created the buyer personas, the content marketing strategy, and we also needed to create a lot of content, uh, case studies, blog articles, uh, gated content pieces, because at the same time that we launched um, HubSpot uh, Marketing Hub, we launched the website uh, with a connected resource center. And uh, this was also something that uh, Invice uh, supported us with. Uh, the goal in mind was always to create a steady st stream of leads to the sales team. And um, this is also something that we did. We uh, went from nearly generating uh, no leads at all to uh, generate around 40 sales qualified leads on a monthly basis after a very short period of time. I think it was like three months or so. Um, Okay, so uh, if we fast forward to today, to 2022, um, 
I don't enjoy the same capabilities as I did three years ago. And I would say this is the best part of HubSpot because as the marketing landscape and the buyer behavior change, HubSpot change. So you can expect that the platform updates regularly and um, grows with your business. Okay, um, so um, at this moment in time then, what do I value with HubSpot? Um, I value that it allows me to work with a revenue marketing strategy that aims to build sales pipeline and regenerate uh, leads, uh, not leads, uh, deals coming from marketing. We have been moving towards uh, working with uh, demand generation uh, to create high quality leads for quite some time now. And um, what I mean with that is that we're trying to move away from the typical lead generation that just um, uh, generate like email addresses but ra rather might um, uh, generate less leads, but with a higher buyer intent that actually is ready to talk to sales. Um, and I would say that having like this all-in-one software like HubSpot is very, very crucial for this because you have all the information at the same place. And uh, from my perspective, this really enhances collaboration and also aligns us uh, to work um, towards the same goal, which is again to generate revenue. Uh, and when I talk to, uh, about us, I mean uh, the marketing team, uh, the sales team, and also the XDR team. Um, another very important part with HubSpot, in my view, is that you have the complete buyer journey in one tool. And I see this as so important when it comes to optimizing your marketing efforts towards what really matters. Um, and let me give you a hands-on example uh, connected to that. So by using, for example, the ads functionality in HubSpot, I can go beyond metrics like CTR and click and focus on what ad campaigns it's actually driving sales. Um, so yeah, it, it give, gives me this holistic view where I can see what performs uh, connected to revenue and what's not. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was it yeah, for me. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Hannah, for sharing that. I mean, uh, you've been on a crazy journey uh, for the last you know, five years or whatever. It, it's, it's crazy, your, your company is growing uh, so fast and I'm just super happy that you joined in today too. Uh, to talk about that as well. Uh, I see that we're running out of time and I just want to thank you all so much for joining in to, to this webinar. Uh, I'm going to send it to all of you uh, after this meeting and also if you have any questions you know where to find us. Uh, we'll be happy, happy to, to help you out and give you more information uh, about everything. So thank you so much everybody and have a really good Wednesday. Thank you Cheers. so much. Bye.